Hosanna in the highest, blessed name of the Lord. Welcome to worship on this Palm Sunday morning as we come um, in the name of the Lord to worship him and to serve him. So we're glad that you have chosen to worship here with us, either in person or online this morning. Two hymns are uh, 197, the first two verses, and then hymn 196. So let us sing to the Lord. Thank you. 
Now, let us call ourselves to worship using the call to worship printed in the bulletin. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Lo, your king comes to you, humble yet victorious, riding on a colt, the foal of a donkey. Hosanna in the highest. Now, let us pray together. Everlasting God, in your tender love for the human race, you sent your Son to take our nature and to suffer death upon the cross. In your mercy, enable us to share in his obedience to your will and in the glorious victory of his resurrection through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. And now if we have been made right with God and one another, let us stand and pass the peace of Christ to each other. The peace of Christ to you.
You may be seated, and as you are, I'd like to welcome you all to worship again this morning, and if you are here in the sanctuary, I'd ask that you would take the fellowship pads, you would sign your name, pass them back and forth down the, down the pew, and take note of who's near you that you might greet them. And if you are worshiping with us online, I would ask that you would click one of those buttons to let us know that you are here with us. Um, as well, at the end of the service, is if any of you... Um, are interested in becoming a member at Lake Murray, I will be down at the baptismal font and would be delighted to meet you there. Um, The only other real announcement um, is for um, the Shuck and Peel, which is going to be April 12th at 6.30. The information is in the bulletin, and I believe someone will probably be here today selling tickets, so um, an event that you do not want to miss. Um, As we come to our prayer time a little later, I would encourage you to pray for those who are on the prayer list. I have several updates for you. Um, Bill Morrow was in the hospital this past week, and he was supposed to have gone home yesterday, so hopefully he is doing well. And then uh, Dick Wilkins moved from the hospital to Lexington Rehab this week. Uh, As well, we learned that Harmon Reed is in rehab and he's at Encompass, so keep those in your prayer. And then Molly Sims died to this life um, this past week, so uh, pray for the Sims family as uh, as they grieve that loss and they walk in the next days of the Holy Week. I think that does it for me. It is Palm Sunday, and so we come to one of the, really the anchor passages in the life of Jesus, his entry into Jerusalem. Let's take a moment and pray together, then we'll, we'll hear from God's word. Heavenly Father, we pray that this moment of worship, this moment of hearing your word would anchor our lives in faith, in your son, Jesus Christ. God, we pray that you would give us the faith to put all of our hopes into your son, Jesus and that he might turn our hope into your victory. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Just say this. The Lord needs it and will send it back here immediately. Then they went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, tying the colt. They told them what Jesus had said. And they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord! Blessed is the... coming kingdom of our ancestor David, Hosanna in the highest. Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. This is the word of the Lord. Now, uh, some of you have been watching basketball, yes? Yeah? Well, Uh, you may not have noticed that the big basketball game has already happened. That the finals for the Division III men's basketball game took place last Saturday. And I know you were waiting with bated breath to see who would win. Actually, I was very excited about that basketball game because my college, Hampton Sydney, was playing in the finals. Sadly, they were not victorious. Uh, In case uh, you missed it, they were playing Trine College, who I had never heard of until the time either. But when the game came on, it took me a few minutes to hunt it up on the internet. It wasn't right there on NBC, front and center. But I found it on the internet, and I, I, I like to get into basketball when March Madness rolls around. It's fun. But I haven't watched a college basketball game all year. But 
This game, I was very excited about. It was my team. And so I went up and I got my Hampton sweatshirt and put it on, even though it was really too warm to wear. And as I was watching the game with enthusiasm, I never really have for basketball. I was shouting, go Tigers! They're the real Tigers, I'll have you know. Now I'm starting trouble. I picked up the shirt and I, I picked up the, 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 the cheer uh, because I was excited. They're the symbols of my basketball team. We do the same thing for larger universities. Universities, Carolina fa fans, how often do you wave a rally towel? Only for the game. Techno music, probably not a big part of your musical listening, except in relation to football. Or, or Clemson fans, how much 1920s jazz do you listen to? Well, there's the one, the tiger rag, right? Those are the symbols of our team, and they get us excited. But they have a real power in us and for us. And then if we think, um, we, can think more, we can think about symbols that are much more serious. If we think of the flag of our nation, uh, it, it stirs patriotism within us. In, our, in the countries that are opposed to us, it stirs up animosity. It's a powerful symbol of something bigger than just terrain. And then, of course, perhaps the most powerful symbol that's ever existed. Symbols have power. And in our reading this morning, on Palm Sunday, Jesus takes up the symbols that the people offer to him. He takes up the symbols of their hope. Eventually, he's going to turn those symbols to the victory of God and the cross. But first, he takes them to ourself. He takes himself. He takes their hopes. The first is simply his command to go and get a colt. Now, that's a strange little story. It's one we read every year. But is this simply the mysterious providence of God that Jesus knew the cult would be there? Or was this Jesus' shrewd planning to set it up ahead of time for his disciples to go and retrieve? Really, it doesn't matter. The key is that Jesus gives the command, and it, when the disciples act on it, it happens. He gets the colt. And remarkably, this colt has never been ridden, and yet he has the authority to climb on it, and it doesn't throw it, him off, and he rides in. Jesus takes on himself the symbol of sovereignty through his command. And then the colt itself is a symbol for God's people in Jerusalem. Uh, we in our, the, when the people are shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. They're referring to the prophet Zechariah. And we heard from Zechariah last week as well. Now, we may not know Zechariah well, but Jesus did, and those crowds did. And so they cry out, Rejoice greatly, O daughter Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter Jerusalem. Lo, your king comes to you triumphant and victorious is he, humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The colt is a symbol for the people in Jerusalem. And Jesus intentionally takes that symbol, that symbol of their hope, and takes it to himself. The same thing happens with the cloaks that are laid out on the road. I think we can understand that as rolling out the red carpet is probably the best way to understand that. It was a way of honoring someone coming into to a city in the ancient world. In fact, King Jehu in the Old Testament, when he came into the city, the people laid their cloaks on the road. Now, I know most of us don't know who King Jehu is, and that's okay. Now you do. I had to go look him up to remind myself as well, but he was one of the Old Testament kings. We don't know that, but the people of Jerusalem knew that. And that was an important symbol for them that Jesus was the coming king. And Jesus takes the symbol of their hope and takes it to himself. The last physical symbol are the branches. Um, 
John tells us in his gospel that they're palm branches. Mark just says they're leafy branches, but it doesn't really matter. What's happening here is they are echoing an important hero of the Jewish people, a hero that Jesus would have learned about in the way we learn about it. I don't know, Harriet Tubman or Abraham Lincoln or any of the founding key members uh, of our nation, the founding fathers. Well, Jesus as a little boy would have heard the story of Simon Maccabeus. Now, again, we may not know that, but what we need to know is that Jesus would have known the story of Simon Maccabeus. And the people of Jerusalem would have known that story. And the story was Simon Maccabeus, about 125 years before Jesus lived, was one of the kings that uh, fought against their Greek rulers. The Greek empire had taken over Jerusalem. And the Maccabean family had kicked them out. And Simon Maccabeus was the king who went and cleansed the temple of pagan rituals. Jesus is about to go in and cleanse the outer court of the temple from the money changers, from turning God's house of prayer into a den of thieves. So when Jesus, oh, and the symbol that Simon Maccabeus had was, guess what? Leafy branches. In fact, when he minted coins, palm branches were on them. When the crowd holds up those leafy branches, those palm fronds, they're not just waving and cheering. They are holding up the symbol of a king who restored the kingdom of Judah. That's what they want and hope for, to get rid of this Roman empire that has them under their boot. The palm fronds are a symbol of their hopes of freedom. And Jesus takes that symbol to himself. Finally, he takes the symbol of the words, Hosanna. The word Hosanna simply means save us. Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. This comes from the 100th Psalm. And this is a psalm that people uh, recited from memory as they were walking into Jerusalem for the big pilgrimage pilgrimages, the big festivals like Passover, which is what Jesus is doing. And for us, when we hear scripture so often, it's a guy in a suit and tie standing in front of people in a big, in a big room while you quietly listen. That's mostly how we experience scripture, but that's not how people would have heard this psalm. First of all, I just learned this week that during the Passover meal, at the fourth cup of wine, they read this psalm. That tells you something important about the Passover to begin with. Even using small cups, we're talking about a celebration. This is a psalm of celebration. But as people were walking into Jerusalem, they would recite this psalm. Let me, I want to read just the very beginning of it to you. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say, his steadfast love endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say, his steadfast love endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, his steadfast love endures forever. I think we are meant to imagine hundreds, hundreds, thousands of people walking up the hill to the Mount of Olives and then to Jerusalem, chanting this song. song. One part of the crowd saying, let the house of Aaron say. And then the other part of the crowd, his steadfast love endures forever. These words are a cheer. And again, Jesus takes the hope that exists in that cheering of Scripture. He takes that hope to himself. Jesus takes their hopes and your hopes, my hopes, and he turns them towards God's victory cross. I urge you, put your hope in the Lord Jesus Christ. It's not simply that he's going to fill, fulfill your hope just as we think, or mine just as I think, but he does take them. And he takes them to God's victory at his cross. 
He turns them towards the cross where the true victory is. And that's what Jesus is going to do through the coming week. Jesus does go into the temple. And he turns over the table and he drives out the money changers who were skimming profits off of the people coming to worship the Lord. He is cleansing the temple as the people hope. The religious leaders come to him and they challenge him. Actually, they try to trap him. They ask him a question. Should we pay taxes to Caesar? But Jesus is not to be caught in that trap. He says, well, why don't you bring me a coin? Show me a coin that we pay these taxes with. The the clever part of that is he's saying, I didn't bring a picture of Caesar into the temple. Did you? Someone produces a coin. Whose head is this on the coin? It's Caesar's. We'll give to Caesar's. Caesar, what is Caesar's? Jesus is turning. And in doing so, of course, he is infuriating the religious leaders. He knows that he is turning toward his cross. Uh, In the temple, Jesus also sees a very poor widow taking her last two half pennies and dropping them into a brass tube that was the way the treasury of the temple collected the money. I'm sure many of us have heard this story, the story of the widow's might. And Jesus praises her faith. But he is also criticizing the way that the wealthy watch an impoverished woman give away her last half pennies to participate in worship instead of the temple being a place where she is cared for. We hear that story as a story of her faith, which it is. But in in that, Jesus is also criticizing the greediness of the high priests. He is turning towards his cross because he makes them angry. Jesus has taken the hopes of the people into the temple and he's turning towards his cross. Now it's important to remember, bear in mind, sometimes we bring our hopes to Jesus and he does give us what we hope for. Right before our reading today, we heard the story of a man named Bartimaeus. Bartimaeus was blind. The crowd is coming by, Jesus in the center, and Bartimaeus cries out, cries out for Jesus, and the disciples tell him to hush. But he won't stop crying out, so Jesus says, bring that man to me. And he says, what do you want? What are your hopes, is the nature of that question. And the man says, I want to be able to see. And Jesus says, your faith has made you well, go. Take your hopes to Jesus. So often he will towards, turn them towards God's victory cross. But sometimes Jesus sees sees that we ask for what we need and he gives it to us. Put your hopes in the Lord Jesus Christ. At the end of the week, Jesus sits down at the most important symbol for God's people of that day, the Passover meal. And at that meal, he turns towards his Christ, his cross. He, said, he takes the bread and the wine that are there And he says, this is my body broken for you. This is my blood shed for you. Jesus is the master of taking the symbols of hope to himself and turning it to God's victory. He takes the colt. He takes the cloaks, the branches, the cry. He takes them all to himself as a symbol of the hopes that his people have in him. And he turns them to his cross. And at his victory cross, Jesus turns all of our needs as well. Jesus takes the trap that the religious leaders tried to set for him in words. And at his cross, he turns it into freedom for us. Jesus takes the mockery of the priest while he hangs on the cross. They say, come down and save yourself. But at the cross, Jesus is turning his death. The fact that he does not come down, he turns that into our salvation. He does not save himself. He saves us instead, saves you instead. The high priest accuses Jesus of blasphemy and sends him to the cross. 
And it is at the cross that Jesus most perfectly brings honor to God, his Father. Pilate sends Jesus to the cross thinking he's getting rid of a piece of trouble, a rabble rouser, a crowd that's gotten itself overexcited. But actually at the cross, Jesus is proclaiming a gospel that will expand far beyond the Roman Empire. Indeed, will overtake the Roman Empire. For most of us, the only reason we ever consider the Romans is because it is under them that Jesus gave his life. The soldiers mock Jesus. They put a crown of thorns upon his head. But then, at the cross of God's victory, it is a centurion who says, truly this was the Son of God. The cross is the place where Jesus works out God's victory in the world. The disciples think at the cross of Jesus, all that they had hoped for, all that they had hoped for in the kingdom of God has come to an end. But at God's victory cross, Jesus has initiated a new beginning and a new creation. I think most poignantly of all, we can think of Mary, the mother of Jesus. And when she comes to his cross, all she can see is not only the terribly suffering, terrible suffering there in that moment, but a future of heartache for a mother who sees her son die so horribly. But wondrously, at God's victory cross, Jesus will turn his mother's heartache into wonder and joy with the coming of Easter. Friends, put your hope in the Lord Jesus Christ. Not because he's going to give you exactly what you want or give me exactly what I hope for. But we put our hopes in Jesus. Put your hopes in Jesus. Put your fears to Jesus. I'm going to put my fears to Jesus. Put our, we put our dreams to Jesus. We give, you should give your dreams to Jesus. Because Jesus carries them not just to what we want. Oh no. Jesus carries them to God's victory cross. And there, he is carrying us into God's future. All glory be to God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. As we have heard from the word, as we have sung a response, let us now respond as well with an affirmation of our faith using the Apostles' Creed. Brothers and sisters in Christ, what do you believe? I believe in God the Father Almighty, 
maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And you may be seated. <clears throat> As you are, we will continue our worship by receiving God's tithes and our offerings, and you may leave them in the back of the sanctuary in the offering plates that are there. You may uh, give online or you may mail them to the church. Let us continue to worship God. Before we pray, I just want to say that today is a turning point in the life of Jesus that he enters Jerusalem and turns to walk to the cross. And we have the opportunity this week to do the same with him. We'll have a service on um, Thursday, the Maundy Thursday service, uh, where we'll celebrate the Lord's Supper together. So I would encourage you to come to that service at 7 o'clock as well to continue to pray for those who are on the prayer list. And now let us go to God in prayer. <clears throat> oh Lord, we come this morning with the crowd singing Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. 
You come into our presence as the King of kings and Lord of lords, but humbly riding on a donkey. You never lord power over us, but call us to walk in your ways of humility and service. You enter Jerusalem knowing that you are headed to the cross, and yet you set your face to do the will of the Father on our behalf. We thank you for seeing past our sin and disobedience and willingly walking the road to life eternal for us. Open our hearts to walk the journey you have for us in this life. Transform us into your people who are called by your name into your work to share your love and grace and forgiveness that brings about new life. May we be willing to see the goodness and the needs around us in them with your abundance and provision. Lord, there are those that are hungry and those that are in need of shelter, those that are broken in soul and spirit, and those that are broken in body and relationships. They know your great love and compassion in the midst of their needs. And may we be generous in the giving of ourselves and our resources to those needs. Help us to use the gifts that you have given to us individually and as a church to further your kingdom here in Chapin and around the world. And gracious God, every good and perfect gift comes from you. May we share the gifts that you have bestowed upon us with those that are hurting or in need of healing. For those in hospital or ill at home, may they know healing touch and experience your presence in ways that bring forth life and hope. Lord, prepare us for the week ahead as we journey to the cross with you. Help us to fix our eyes upon you that we may see the cost you willingly gave each of us to have life abundant. Help us to walk in gratitude through the Holy Spirit for the gift of life eternal and relationship with you that we have received through the cross. Bring us into perfect union with you and with our neighbor. God, you know our hearts and our minds, our thoughts. Align these with your heart and mind and the desires you have for us in this world. May we walk in ways that shine your light and love throughout our community. We thank you that you hear our prayers and answer them with our best interest at heart. Make us wholly yours in and through Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
The charge to, to you today is quite simple. Join the crowds and put your hope in the Lord Jesus Christ, for he will bear them to the cross and then on to glory. Put your hope in the Lord Jesus Christ. Now may the grace of God our Father, the love of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forever. Amen.